side and breaks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back here on the WHS Network here with our latest edition of the Raider Sports Report covering the 2022 Delaware County Boys Basketball Tournament Preview Show right here tonight. Again, as always, I'm your play-by-play broadcaster, Brandon Morvillius. Alongside here with me is cameraman Jordan Redbeard McCoy. We hope all of you had a wonderful day so far as uh, we get geared up for another boys basketball tournament. Should be a uh, interesting tournament when it comes to what the what the bracket looks like here, which we're going to break that down here in just a brief moment. Uh, but again, we want to thank you all for tuning in here for this uh, county tournament preview show again uh, last night. Uh, was the girls' uh, opening round of the uh, Delaware County Basketball Tournament, which Wapahani defeated Daleville. They're 80-21, the final score of that uh, win last night. So they'll, boom, uh, they'll be moving on now to uh, Thursday night's game there against the Delta Lady Eagles at 6 p.m. We hope you all can tune in there for that. But uh, we'll go ahead and get right into things here with this um, county preview show here for the Boys Basketball Tournament. Again, same thing like what we always do. We'll break down the bracket, um, look at that. When uh, you know, not well. First and foremost, who's going to be playing who on what nights and where at. Um, so that's what's going to be happening with the bracket. And then myself and Redbeard will also uh, be looking at each and every single team in this county tournament and uh, breaking those teams down. You know, giving you guys the latest stats and information. Uh, now we will say before we get started here tonight, the Cowan Blackhawks. Uh, end up having to forfeit. Um, they will not be playing in this year's tournament, unfortunately, uh, due to COVID-19 contact tracing. You hate that for those guys because, you know, you go all this season long, you know, reared and ready to play in this county tournament, especially the seniors. Uh, you know, they don't get to play in their very last county tournament. So, again, you know, we, we hate that for Cowan. Uh, but we want to wish those guys the very best of luck, their entire coaching staff and and we'll see them on down the road right here towards the end of the season uh, here for Wapahani. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look here at uh, this 2022 Delaware County Boys Basketball Tournament bracket. It looks like this. It's all going to start tonight, folks, on Wednesday, January the 12th. Uh, there's only going to be one game played. Like I said, Cowan had to forfeit. That's the reason why Yorktown had already moved up into that semifinal round matchup there with Wapahani there on Friday night. Uh, but again, this uh, opening round matchup will be between the Delta Eagles as they will be taking on the Daleville Broncos this evening at 6 p.m. Again, uh, all county tournament action for the boys basketball tournament will be held at Delta High School, just like normal. Um, you know, it's you know really nice setting, gr- you know, great amount of room, and hopefully everyone can pack on in there and root on uh, their respective teams uh, throughout the week here. Uh, but again, so that's tonight, Delta. And Daleville, Delta's the visiting team. Daleville will be the home team. Again, the bottom teams on the bracket are the home teams uh, during the basketball games this week. Uh, the winner of that Delta and Daleville game will then play Westdale on uh, Friday night, January the 14th. That will be a 6 p.m. start time. So, again, the winner of Delta and Daleville will take on Westdale 6 p.m. on Friday night again. It'll be Wapahani, your Wapahani Raiders taking on the Yorktown Tigers. The Raiders will be the visiting team on Friday night. Again, that will be right around an 8 p.m. start time there for that semifinal matchup. Uh, there between a rematch of two teams that featured uh, last season's championship game in which the Yorktown Tigers uh, prevailed there in that one in a close battle there with your Raiders. Uh, so Wapahani, I'm sure... Uh, maybe thinking about that a little bit uh, heading into Friday night's ball game, and then uh, all of that will culminate into the 2022 Delaware County Boys Basketball Tournament Championship game on Saturday night, uh, January the 15th. That'll be an 8 p.m. start time there from Delta High School. So again, that is the bracket here, folks. Uh, what it looks like again: Wapahani will play on Friday evening at 8 p.m. They're against the Yorktown Tigers. We hope you all can come out and support the guys. Uh, and we're pleased to announce we'll be there broadcasting the game. Uh, we got the okay uh, yesterday. That, well, that's why we was out there at Yorktown last night for the girls' basketball tournament, uh, in which you know we'll be back there again tomorrow night as well, and then with the boys then on Friday night. So really looking forward uh, to a uh, fulfilled week of, uh, of Delaware County basketball here on the WHS Network. 
Uh, so now we'll go ahead and take a look here at the teams. Again, um, you know, first and foremost, Wapahani, uh, you know, same deal like what it was with the girls' basketball tournament preview show. We're not going to go in depth uh, statistically wise individually on all these players. Uh, we'll go over some team stats for Wapahani, but that's about it because we don't want to reveal too much information here. We want to make the other teams kind of work for it a little bit. But you all know what kind of arsenal that this Raider basketball team has, what kind of ammunition uh, that they can pack a punch with going into every single ball game, coming off of two wins uh, this past weekend over then ranked number seven in Class 2A Eastern Hancock and then uh, over Muncie Burris there last Saturday. So, uh, the Raiders uh, flying high on all cylinders right now, coming in to this county tournament nine and two on the season. They're averaging 70.8 points a game offensively, on the defensive side, averaging 50.2 points allowed per game. Uh, so really doing a fantastic job. You know, you're 20 on the plus side from offense to defense as far as uh, scoring points compared to what you're allowing. Uh, that's going to win you a lot of ball games. That's yeah. the reason why we are where we are record wise. Uh, field goal percentage, we're at 50%. We're 288 of 578 there from the field. From beyond the arc, we're 97 of 240, good for 40%, which, by the way, is the best in the uh, in the Delaware County Tournament in that statistical category. Also from the free throw line, uh, 107 of 154, good for 69%. That's actually fell here. Uh, rather significantly here within the last week and a half or so. The Raiders were up close to about 80% from the line. Things have kind of tailed off there a little bit there from the charity stripe, but hopefully we can uh, pick things back up again here. Uh, rebounds a game, uh, 30.7 here for Wapahoney. We averaged 15.5 assists, also nine steals, and we only turn it over at a rate of 8.9, so basically might as well say nine times a game. That also is a very key contributing factor in every single ball game. And so the Raiders, uh, like I said, you know, head coach Matt Luce and his entire coaching staff, they're going to have these guys ready and ready to play uh, come Friday night. You know, it's a big game, obviously a huge part uh, or huge time of the year yeah. to be a part of. And uh, it's really going to be a, a great one come up there on uh, the second game of the evening there against Yorktown on Friday night. Speaking of Yorktown, uh, the Tigers – with that forfeit victory, if you will, uh, there over Cowan, they will now improve to 5-5 five and five on the season, assuming that they put that in the win total. I, I, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the Tigers 5-5 five and five here on the season. Uh, offensively, they're averaging 49.4 points a game. They're allowing 52. Uh, field goal percentage, uh, they're 39% from the field, uh, 159 of 406 from beyond the arc. Uh, they are 30 percent, 51 of 169, followed up there with 77 of 95, 81 percent there from the free throw line. So doing their work there from the charity stripe is the Tigers. Also rebounds per game is 25.4. They average 10.3 assists per game, also 4.9 steals, and they turn it over at a rate of 9.8, so nearly 10 turnovers, uh, just one more than, uh, than what Wapahoney averages as a team. Uh, players to really watch for here for the Tigers. Um, they do have a little bit of a new look to the team this year. Not a whole lot of change. Still got their big-time players there, and uh, one of those is Kieran Tuari. Uh, averaging 11.9 points per game, 5.3 rebounds, go along with 2.8 assists per game. Uh, shoots 42% from the field, 36 of 85. He's 42% from Ianni Ark. Uh, which I believe leads the team in that statistical category, 22 of 53 there for the Tigers. And he's also 13 of 15, 87% there from the free throw line. Uh, next up here is uh, A.J. Dunn, 13.4 points per game, averages uh, also 4.1 rebounds a game, 38% there from the field, 43 of 113. Uh, also from beyond the arc, uh, not the best so far this season. He's 7 of 38, 18%. Again, beyond the three-point line. And then at the free throw line, he's 28 of 37, good for 76%. Uh, next here we have Jacob Grimm, uh, another young man here, averaging 9.2 points a game, three point, uh, well, actually right at, at uh, three rebounds a game, uh, but also 3.4 assists per game as well. Uh, shoots 40% from the field. He's also 14 of 41, 34% from behind the three-point line, and he's a perfect, crisp 21 of 21, 100% from the free throw line. That doesn't happen very often, yeah. 
So Jacob Grimm getting it done there from the free throw line this season. Uh, big key contributing factor. You know, you want to yeah. go into that Friday night matchup or any game against them. Yeah. You definitely don't want to foul him. <laughs> but, <laughs> but nonetheless here, uh, we'll have uh, Carter Loveless, uh, 8.2 points per game. Uh, 5.8 rebounds a game. Also, he is 42% from the field. Doesn't take any threes. He lives on the inside. He's a post player. Uh, and then he's 7 for 10, 70% there from the free throw line. So that was Carter Loveless. And then lastly here we have Mason Moulton uh, coming in averaging 3.7 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, also two assists. He's uh, 14 of 31, 45% there from the field. Also 3 of 7 43 percent from behind the three-point line and uh, he's a perfect two for two from the free throw line so that is your wapahani raiders and the yorktown tigers again wapahani nine and two yorktown five and five heading into that uh, semifinal round matchup there at 8 p.m on friday night january the 14th so i'm going to send things on over here to the bearded one jordan redbeard mccoy uh, to give you all the uh, the breakdown here on uh, Delta versus Daleville and uh, West Dale. All right, yeah, thanks, Marv. We'll jump right in. We'll go with the Delta Eagles first. They come in with a record of 4-7 and seven on the season. As a team, they score an average of 50.3 points per game while giving up 51.2. Their field goal percentage, they're 188 of 439, good for 43%. From three-point land, they're 61 of 179, good for 34%. From the free throw line, they're 110 of 143, good for 77%. They get 19.2 rebounds a game, 9-point assists, 7.2 steals, and they turn the ball over 15 and a half times per game. That's some players to watch for. First, we have Neil Marshall. He gets 15.2 points per game, 2.7 rebounds. From the field, he's 54 of 133, good for 41%. From three-point land, he's 23 of 67, good for 34%. And from the free throw line, he's 36 of 40, good for 90%. Then we have Jackson Wars. He scores 12.7 points per game, 6.1 rebounds. From the field, he's 49 of 96, good for 51%. And from the free throw line, he's 41 of 90, 40, 41 of 50, excuse me, good for 71%. Then we have Jaden Fernie. He scores 7.7 .7 points per game with 3.3 re rebounds, 2.6 assists per game. From the field, he's 30 of 70, good for 43%. From three-point land, he's 14 of 35, good for 40 percent. And from the free throw line, he's 11 of 17, good for 65 percent. And finally, we have Damari Hood. He scores 5.4 points per game, 2.8 rebounds a game. From the field, he's 43 percent, 20 of 46. From three-point land, he's 9 of 19, good for 47 percent. And from the free throw line, he's 5 of 7, good for 71 percent. Next, we'll go with the Delville Broncos. They come in with a record of 6-2 and two on the season. As a team, they score 58.5 points per game while giving up 54 points a game. Their field goal percentage, they're 161 of 422, good for 38%. From three-point land, they're 65 of 193, good for 34%. From the free throw line, they're 78 of 119, good for 66%. They get 32 rebounds a game on 14 assists, 10.8 steals, and they turn the ball over 10.6 times per game. That's some players to watch for. Travion Johnson, 18.1 points per game, 6.5 rebounds, 2.1 assists, and 3 steals per game. From the field, he's 53 of 108, good for 49%. From three-point land, he's 14 of 37, good for 38%. And from the free throw line, he's 25 of 28, good for 89%. Next, we have Camden Leisure, 11.5 points per game, 5.8 rebounds a game, 7 assists, and 3.4 steals per game. From the field, he's 27 of 80, good for 34%. From three-point land, he's 4 of 26, good for 15%. From the free throw line, he's 65%. Next, we have Merrick Adams. He's 10.3 points per game, four rebounds a game. From the field, he's 28 for 66, good for 42%. From three-point land, he's 20 of 50, good for 40%. And from the free throw line, he's 6 of 13, good for 46%. Next, we have Dylan Scott. 7.1 points per game, 3.4 rebounds a game, and 2.3 assists per game. From the field, he's 19 of 84, good for 23%. From three-point land, he's 14 of 40, good for 35%. And from the free throw line, he's 5 of 14, good for 36%. And finally, we have Robert Wilson. He scores 3.5 points per game. He gets 7.5 rebounds a game. From the field, he's 13 of 27, good for 48%. And from the line, he's 2 for 3, good for 67%. 
And finally, we've got the Westdale Warriors. They come in with a record of 6-5 and five on the season. As a team, they score 65.6 points per game. They give up 61.4. Uh, their field goal percentage, they're 265 of, of 609, good for 44%. Behind the arc, they're 53 of 168, good for 32%. And from the line, they're 139 of 217, good for 64%. They get 22.5 rebounds a game with 13.5 assists, 12.6 steals, and 12.3 turnovers a game. Some players to watch. Evan Weitzel, 20.5 points a game, 2.5 rebounds, 2.7 assists, and 3.6 steals per game. From the field, he's 77 of 168, good for 46%. From behind the line, he's 9 of 31, good for 29%, and he's 65% from the free throw line. Next we have Zach Todd. He gets 11.5 points per game with 6 rebounds a game. From the field, he's 45 of 133, good for 34%. From three-point land, he's 7 of 33, good for 21%. And from the free throw line, he's 29 of 39, good for 74%. Next, we have Alex Light. He gets 7.2 points per game with 3.3 rebounds a game, 2 assists per game. From the field, he's 34 of 57, good for 60%. From the three-point line, he's 2 of 7, good for 29%. From the free throw line, he's 9 of 18, good for 50%. Then we have Cameron Buckner, 8.6 points per game, 5 rebounds per game. From the field, he's 36 of 85, good for 42%. From behind the line, he's 9 of 24, good for 38%. And from the free throw line, he's 14 of 23, good for 61% on the season. Finally, we have Cade Pretorius, 5, ga- five points per game, 1.5 rebounds. From the field, he's 18 of 49, good for 37%. From the three-point line, he's 14 of 38, good for 37%. From the free throw line, he's 5 of 8, good for 63%. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Red Beer, for, uh, again, breaking down uh, Delta, Daleville, as well as Westdale. Uh, should be a good matchup there between Delta and Daleville tonight. Uh, that Daleville basketball team has been wreaking all kinds of havoc throughout the course of the season here. And, uh, you know, Delta a little bit behind so far this year, but still – a very talented group, uh, very well coached over there. Westell, same thing. You know, we've seen them earlier on the season. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen anybody else. We haven't played yeah. anybody else in the county except for Westell, and that was it. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how those two teams fare tonight. Again, the winner of that uh, Delta and Daleville game will then play Westell on uh, Friday night. That will be the 6 p.m. game, first game of the night there on Friday evening. Uh, there from Delta High School. Again, it'll be Wapahunny taking on Yorktown at 8 o'clock. Again, you can catch that live right here on the WHS Network. Um, and then uh, we'll be back at it, like I said, tomorrow night uh, with the girls' basketball team. We'll be at uh, Yorktown as Wapahunny will be taking on Delta. That will be a 6 p.m. start time for that. And then uh, the championship games for the county tournament will be uh, coming up on Saturday night on January the 15th. Again, the uh, the girls' uh, championship as is at 6 p.m., and then the boys will be at 8 o'clock. Again, both those games at Delta High School. So, uh, again, we hope that you guys uh, took a little something from this. Again, we get all of our stats from maxpreps.com, and John Harrell as well. We always get the records and so on and so forth from there. Um, two very valuable and uh, reliable sites that we always usually go to. Uh, but, again, hopefully, you know, you guys now have a little bit of insight and some thought on these teams um like i said it's always an interesting time of the year should be a battle all the way to the end you know with all these games and uh really looking forward to seeing what will happen here because uh you know like i said you know yorktown the defending champs from last year are are right there to to defend their title and uh it's going to be a tough one coming up there on friday night there for wampahani so we hope you all can tune in please come on out support the team if you can though uh, we'd love to see you all there, pack the pack the house there at Delta, root on the Wapahunny Raiders to hopefully what will be a couple victories this week and uh, and hopefully a Delaware County crown. But uh, a lot of work to be done. And, again, like I said, we'll have it right here on the WHS Network uh, coming up Friday night, 8 p.m., Wapahunny taking on Yorktown. So, folks, again, this has been our Raider Sports Report, again presenting this 2022 Delaware County Boys Basketball Tournament Preview Show. And until next time, I'm Brandon Morvillius alongside cameraman Jordan Redbeard-McCoy. Have a great night, everyone.